Hi, my name is Sarah Vangle. I use she, her pronouns. I work for Ohio Health, Family Medicine, and Primary Care Sports Medicine Fellowship. Um, I would like to acknowledge VJ Pandia, who works for Radiology Inc. in Columbus, Ohio, who helped put together a contact for these slides. This is part of our AMSSM Family Medicine Radiology Project, and today we'll be discussing the thoracic spine. Our objectives for today are to learn a systematic approach to reading MSK x-rays of the thoracic spine, to review common adult findings on x-ray, and discuss clinical correlation of these x-ray findings. When we think about the thoracic spine, the three most commonly obtained views are the AP, which is here on the left, the lateral, which is in the center, and the swimmer's view, which you can see on the right. We're gonna take the time to delve into those in depth. When you look at the AP of the thoracic spine, you wanna make sure that you're looking at each vertebral body to assess whether or not those heights are maintained and whether or not they are relatively uniform in shape. When you look down the center of those vertebral bodies, you can see these circular um, opacities throughout, which are actually the spinous process that you can see straight through the back. On either side of the spinous, um, on either side of the vertebral body, there's also these pedicles that you can see, which are nice and round and circular. So the outside of the circle is the outside of the pedicle, whereas the center is the center of the pedicle. Um, and these, again, you're looking to make sure that then assess that they are uniform from side to side, and it doesn't look like one side is smaller than the other. When using these landmarks of the spinous process and the pedicle, so you can also assess for rotation on whether or not the patient is turned to the left or the right to help you say, are you looking at the patient straight on? And is that affecting the way that you're seeing the uniformity of these vertebrae? In the thoracic spine, most people will also have 12 ribs. So again, you can count those ribs coming off to assure that there are actually 12 of them um, that correlate with each thoracic spine. On the lateral view, um, you're looking again at each vertebral body to assess their height and make sure that they are well maintained. You can look at the anterior ridge of those vertebral bodies to make sure that they're well aligned. And that middle section, that posterior vertebral body to again make sure that everything seems like they're relatively aligned and something's not shifted forward or backwards. You also want to look at the intervertebral space the space between each vertebrae to see if they are well maintained. Posteriorly, you can assess the pedicles, like right here, in this lower, this is actually probably an upper lumbar vertebrae, where you can actually see that uh, pedicle the best, um, which again is going to be where you, a common site for either osteoarthritis or stress fracture or changes um, in patients. Looking posteriorly, it is difficult to see those facets in the thoracic spine because unfortunately you just have a lot of rib overlap and so it can make it difficult to assess. But here's probably a portion where you can see that posterior um, facet and that joint down much lower. And finally, there's the swimmer's view. The swimmer's view is best to help us identify the lower cervical spine and the upper thoracic spine. So when a patient has pain at that junction posteriorly, I would probably get this swimmer's view so I can assess those vertebral bodies a little bit better to again, ensure that they're maintaining adequate height and look at those intervertebral disc spaces. There are three common adult conditions that we see in the thoracic spine that I wanted to review with you, being scoliosis, degenerative changes, and compression fractures. So right off the bat and looking at this thoracic spine, you can see that it, it does not, these spinous processes do not follow a straight line. In fact, it seems to curve to the patient's right. You can still see that this patient is probably not rotated because I can see each of uh, these owl eyes looking at us and they look like they're looking directly at you, which is the signs of those pedicles posteriorly, right? Um, and 
this particular patient is curved to the patient's right, which we call a dextroscoliosis. If this patient's spine was curved to the left, we would refer to that as levoscoliosis. When you're looking at a lateral view of someone with scoliosis, you actually ch see, change the way that you're seeing these vertebral bodies. So down lower, you can actually see here is one part of the implant and here is the back side of that implant. So, so it looks as if that vertebra is actually turned towards you. So you can actually see the top of it a little bit better. Um, so don't be fooled that it might look like these, this vertebral body height is a little bit less than the one above it or than the one up, up here, but it's actually from scoliosis and that you're seeing a different angle of that vertebral body as opposed to that vertebral body actually having lost its height. The next problem I commonly see in the thoracic spine are degenerative changes. I typically see this in my 80 plus year old females. Um, and this would be a good view of a increased kyphoscoliosis. So that are, they're starting to get that hump in the back um, that can be indicative of loss of height, either inter, in the intervertebral space or even loss of height of each individual vertebral body. On this particular film, you can also say that these bones look relatively radiolucent. So I am concerned about osteopenia in this patient. And on each of the end plates of the bones, you can see there's increased uh, brightness or increased sclerosis, which is one of those signs of degenerative changes. And again, anteriorly, you can see those osteophytes and maybe even a bridging osteophyte here. Um, which is connecting the two intervertebral bodies because that body doesn't know uh, what to, where it's supposed to be laying down calcium, right? And so it causes these extra osteophytes. I would say the third most common thing that I see in the thoracic spine is a compression fracture. So again, when we're looking at a lateral view here of an x-ray, I'm looking at the vertebral body heights. And working my way from top to bottom, they all look pretty uniform until I get to about here where this one looks fairly squished as opposed to rotated because I'm not seeing the different parts of the end plate, but actually squished together here. And you can have a definite decrease in that vertebral body height. Um, this can happen for a variety of reasons. It's pretty typical with patients with osteopenia or osteoporosis. Um, I've definitely also seen compression fractures from um, motor vehicle accidents um, or jumping on a trampoline. Um, and so this is one of the main things that you can look for, especially when that patient has midline bony tenderness um, and are pretty rigid or not willing to move, like axially rotate, flex or extend. So in summary, I think it's really important for the thoracic to, for the thoracic spine to understand that what is normal alignment and normal spacing of those thoracic vertebral bodies. Please be sure to look at the height of each vertebral body and whether or not it looks rotated, either left, right, or up, down. And then look at the overall curvature and alignment of those thoracic bodies so that you don't confuse a scoliosis with a potential compression fracture. Thank you for your attention today. I hope you've learned something.